Part 2, Medical Options and Practices. It is important to remember that each of us experiences and copes with pain differently. No two women and no two labors are alike. Some, like Gina's, are real physical challenges, and others, like Kathy's, are easier to manage. Before experiencing labor for the first time, it is hard to know what comfort strategies will work for you. So much depends on the support you receive and the progress and length of your labor. It is important to stay flexible about labor, your options for pain relief, and other interventions. The pain management techniques covered in part one of this film, breathing, relaxation, comfort measures like a bath or shower, and movement, massage, and companionship are, for many women, all the resources they need. For others, medication or anesthesia is necessary or preferred. But because any drug you take may affect your labor, your baby, and how both of you feel after birth, it is important to ask your doctor or nurse about what the effects might be and how long they may last. Analgesics. Oh, yeah, here Analgesic medications change the sensation of pain without relieving it altogether. They help to increase pain tolerance and allow for more relaxation between contractions. The most common analgesics used in labor are synthetic narcotics administered intravenously by injection or by a combination of methods. Because they can slow labor down, narcotic analgesics are seldom offered before the cervix is at least four centimeters dilated. Occasional side effects include lowered blood pressure, nausea, or dizziness. Analgesics are not offered late in labor because if given at that time, the baby may experience side effects at birth, ranging from drowsiness to respiratory depression. There are medications available in the birthing area to reverse these effects. <laughs>